I really need a brand deal. Hello there and welcome to What The Football. We are back again with yet another video. And Martial, it's the difference between Manchester United being successful or not in the short term. Who'd have thought that? Before I carry on with this video, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. would really appreciate it, as always. Um, Manchester United have just beaten the seventh best team from Cyprus, officially, because I think they are they finished seventh in their respective league last season. Uh, Anomia, um, not... Pneumonia, although the way United played in the first half, uh, it felt like they did have pneumonia. They're a side um, from Cyprus who have got Neil Lennon as manager and an ex-City player in midfield. It feels like you're playing against a football manager save, doesn't it? Um, let's talk about the first half first, um, because Manchester United dominate the first half. I'm a 1-0 down. It did literally feel like a FIFA game in that first half. Um, let's just talk about the defensive setup. Um, dreadful. I've said it loads of times, um, not on camera, but to friends, um, I do have friends, that Diego Dallo is not a first-team Manchester United right-back. I do like him, I like, I like his enthusiasm, I like his commitment, but he is not a Manchester United full-back moving into the future. He is Alex Button with a Portuguese passport. He is. He's a good player, he's a solid player, but he's no more than um, a 7 out of 10. And I think Manchester United need more than a 7 out of 10. Um Tao Malassia, whose personality I love, but maybe he needed to be dropped tonight after what happened at the weekend. I know he got subbed off in the first half and that was pretty embarrassing, but maybe just a couple of days away from the limelight would have done him a world of good. Hasn't worked. Wasn't particularly great tonight. Some overhead passes. He looked devoid of confidence tonight, Malassia. And this is not the Malassia that we've seen the first few games. He... Like I said, his crossing was poor, his passing was poor. He didn't seem awake. And for the goal that was conceded, I'll get onto the goal that was conceded in a bit more depth in a second, but he overdid it on the play, and obviously they we, you know, got caught on the counter-attack. The shape wasn't great, but they got caught on the counter-attack. Um, where are we now? Uh, Martinez. I love Martinez. I like, again, his enthusiasm. I like his shithousery. He's an Argentinian defender. I know, I know a lot of people say with Martinez, oh, he dives in a lot and, you know, he's not a cultured centre-back in the same way like Van Dijk is or Beckenbauer was. I think depending on which country you're from, you defend in a certain way. Like, Italians and Argentinians are masters of the dark arts. We've got to accept that. Whereas Dutch centre-halves and maybe German centre-halves a little bit more, well, a little bit on reading of the game a little bit. It's, it's, it's how you're brought up, really. Um, I love Martinez a lot, but I think he needs somebody alongside him with a presence. It's not Varane, because of his injury record. Yes, he's brilliant when he's on form, but we, re we very rarely see that as United fans. And it isn't Lindelof or Maguire, because they're basically carbon copies of each other, but maybe with different build. Let's go on to the midfield, particularly in the first half. Appalling. Um, how can a midfield that includes players who have played for the likes of Real Madrid, Ajax, Sporting and Inter get caught so many times on a counter-attack in that first half? Mind you, one of them did play for Spurs, so maybe that's the reason. Um, an attack. Um, actually, midfield, Eriksen. Um, again, I like Eriksen, but he's playing two games a week. I know United haven't played in weeks up, uh, before the City game, but we can't keep on playing Eriksen every single game. This is a guy who's just come back from a serious half problem. He's 30. He is not a boxy box midfielder. Yes, he's got a lot of energy, but he isn't a boxy box midfielder. He's a number 10. He perhaps needs a bit of rest. On to the attack. Anthony looked promising. Some nice moments first off. He does do that eye rubbing thing a lot where he cuts inside and maybe teams will find him out eventually. But I think he showed a little bit of promise tonight. I know it's against a. Uh, the seventh best team from Cyprus, but you can only judge players to who they're playing against. But I think we need to talk about two players in particular, and one of them got subbed off and the other one didn't. One of them is Jane Sancho. Now, United spent a year caught in this bloke, and players like Neto, Jota, Richarlison were all available and they could have got them. It's like chasing a girl for years and turning every other girl away that comes calling, only to see only to see the girl without makeup and realise what she actually looks like. United overspent for Jane Sancho with English tax, and at the moment he's not producing, and he got rightfully subbed off in that first half for the second half. Absolutely bang on decision, and 
he did it with with Malassi as well, Tenog. And a lot of people will be saying, "Oh, he's like he's lost, he's not setting a good example." He is because Manchester United are in a position where he came in as manager, and the morale was the worst it's been in years. So every player is fighting their, fighting for their place, and if you're not performing, you've got to be embarrassed because Manchester United are a club with a heritage and a history. And quite frankly, most of these players aren't showing that. And if that means being embarrassed or tough, tough, leak it out to the press if you want. Because if you leak it out to the press, this manager will drop you. He'll bollock you behind the scenes and you'll never play for the football club again. And one thing I will like, I do like about this manager, and maybe he isn't showing it in terms of the tactics or the football, because it's not been particularly great thus far. He's showing that he is boss. Something maybe... Ragnar tried to show but couldn't because people didn't take him seriously because he wasn't the first team manager. Oli tried it, but he couldn't do it. Jason Mourinho tried it a little bit too harshly, I think. And I think he tried it on the wrong players, or some of the wrong players anyway. And of course, I'll get onto the two players in question in a moment. Now on to Ronaldo. I'm aware he's arguably the greatest of all time. I'm aware that he's one goal away from some sort of record of 700 goal, whatever it is. But when it doesn't go well for Ronaldo, he brings a whole atmosphere around him. It's not good karma. It's not good for the attitude. And I put a comment up on Sky Sports in the, uh, on Twitter regarding Ronaldo and obviously the comment that Roy Keane made. And I'm perfectly aware that maybe, you know, he doesn't suit the way that United play. But good players, no matter who they play for, always flourish. And Ronaldo's the same. But he needs to be a little bit more of a team player and... Maybe it's Ronaldo's time is up at Manchester United. And if he goes in the summer, if he goes in January, United will move on. Because I tell you something, United moved on from Ronaldo before. And they can certainly do it again. They moved on from David Beckham. They moved on from Eric Cantona. They eventually moved on from Matt Busby, eventually. It took them 26 years, but they moved on. The most important loss for Manchester United in the last 10 years won't be Cristiano Ronaldo. It's been Sir Alex Ferguson. And that's why we need to move on from Cristiano Ronaldo and start afresh. Now onto the substitutes. Marcus Rashford. Marcus Rashford on form is a huge, huge threat. People just labelling him, labeling him as a pace merchant really have no idea. They literally have no idea. He can shoot, he can pass, he can link up play. And yes, he is really quick. So what? So what? A lot of players get criticised for their lack of pace. Maguire gets criticised for, for his lack of pace. You can't use pace as a way of criticising a player. Because when they haven't got pace, you criticise them for that. Maybe you, you just have an agenda against a player. Not a agenda against an attribute for the player. And a Martial. Martial on form is a joy to behold as well. And his partnership with Rashford is a joy to behold. And again, we haven't, we haven't seen it, really. We haven't really seen it. Yes, he has a Ballon d'Or clause. Yes, he's the most expensive teenager in world football when he was bought. Sometimes them careers don't pan out the way people planned. Part of it's not Martial's fault, that. He didn't give himself the expectation the world gave him. That's not his fault. It genuinely isn't. He's been partly guilty for his lack of, for his lack of first team action in the last couple of years. But also, I think managers have been, play, been to blame as well. I think Jose Mourinho dropped Martial when he was in good form and bought Alexis Sanchez. I don't think that helped. I think he could have been a number nine for Manchester United had he had the confidence and the the confidence of good form because of the manager picking him. I think that would have helped. But you know, Jose Mourinho has a certain type of striker. Martial wasn't one of them. So what? I think maybe people need to realise that this guy was never going to be the second coming of Thierry Henry. Because if there's somebody in French football that is that, his name's Kylian Mbappe, and he's a generational talent. But maybe, but let's not forget, Thierry Henry's era, there was another young player coming through at exactly the same time who was actually tipped to be better than Thierry Henry. There were actually two. One of them is David Trezeguet, who had a very good career in his own way. But there was somebody else in French football at the same age that was going to have a better career than Thierry Henry. And his name was Nicolas Anelka. And he had a pretty good career. Not a great career, not as great a career as he could have had, but he had a very, very good career. Won a Champions League, won a Premier League, won a World Cup. 
maybe he's not a second coming of Thierry Henry, Anthony Martial. Maybe he's a missing link between Nicholas and Elka and Louis Saha, which for the short term for Manchester United isn't actually that bad. There we have it. Thank you so much for watching this video. Um, a bit of a reaction to the game, a little bit, and something about Martial, because he gets a lot of criticism on social media, and at times, rightly so, and you know what? I'll criticise any Manchester United player that deserves criticism, like James Sancho, but I tell you something. If they play well tomorrow, it's all forgotten on Sunday against Everton. If they play well, it's all forgotten, because all I want from my players is to play well. I don't like criticising players particularly not on social media, because you get given these tags of being negative and I've got agendas against certain players. I've got agendas against no Manchester United players. Every Manchester United player deserves criticism, but they also deserve praise when they've earned it. Martial's one, Rashford's one, Maguire's one. If Maguire gives a man of the match performance tomorrow, will he be papering over cracks, potentially? And he'll need to show it every single week. But I'll praise him for that game. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please like the video. Please subscribe to the channel. Have a great rest of the week. Take care.